Hey everybody, what's up? Britt and Ryan here for another food vlog. If you guys don't know, we are huge foodies, so we are so thrilled to be checking out yet another Massachusetts food spot. This place is called Union Straw, and if you walk around, you will see all exposed beams. It has like a rustic urban feel to it, and I heard that Union Straw is actually named after a business back in the day that produced a ton of straw hats. So I can't wait to figure out the history on why it's named Union Straw. And babe, who are you excited to chat with today? We're going to chat with one of the chefs, Dan Lane. He's in charge of coming up with the menu ideas, what they want on it, what they want. But he also has his own line of sauces. So we'll be chatting with him about that as well. And I believe it's the duck grilled cheese is what he's excited for us to try. So we are looking forward to going in there and trying all the delicious menu items that he chooses to bring us out. seeing all the exposed beams and the rustic feel. It almost looks like you're inside of a barn. And my favorite part about this whole restaurant is the fact that this restaurant, again, is called Union Straw, and it actually pays homage to some of the history here in Foxborough. Can you kind of give me some of that backstory? Yeah, it was um, named after the, fra the first straw hat company that was uh, established here in Foxborough. They took homage to that, and you know we, we kept this rustic barn feel, and you know, the pictures on the walls with like barn animals and just kind of got that whole vibe of keeping it homey and, and, you know, keep it like a local establishment where you want to kind of come and eat and hang out. And although the spot is not family owned, it kind of has that vibe because the four investors that actually own this business are from Foxborough. Yep, they're all Foxborough residents. Um, they're in here all the time having dinner, um, just saying hi to people, you know, just making it that homey feel of you know, not to feel the cheers line, but like everybody knows your name type of thing, and you know who's who, you, your neighbors, your this, and it's, it's a cool vibe. It makes a good, good, good vibe in here. And what is your favorite item on the menu right now? I know Ryan's going to be speaking <laughs> with you about that a little bit more in detail, but I kind of want to hear from the executive chef what your favorite item is right now on, on that menu. I mean, I'm a big fan of Cheez-Its when I get home tonight. No, I'm just kidding. Cheez-Its! <laughs> Who would have thought? What flavor of Cheez-Its? The you reduced know. fat, i got to stay thin. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I like the, uh, the shrimp po' boy. It's just got that. It's one of my favorite things to eat when, I, when it's on a menu. If it's done right, it's, it's pretty amazing. And Dan actually has been a chef for the last 11 years. He grew up in Dover, New Hampshire. Yeah. So can you give me some backstory on the fact that you literally have been a chef for 11 years. You learned how to cook a little bit alongside your uncle. Yep at a very young age. So let's talk about your chef history. Yeah, so I mean, I started out, you know, when I was young, cooking with my grandfather in the kitchen, you know, get the peeled potato duty and all that stuff. And I grew with him and he taught me a lot of stuff I know. And then my uncle owned a bar and grill called the Emerald Rose in Dover, New Hampshire, back in the 90s. And uh, I started dishwashing there and the guy that was on the oven station kept burning things and I kept grabbing the grill and pulling things out and asking them if it's done and next thing you know, you know, about 15, 16 years old, I'm on the line cook, uh, cooking in my uncle's restaurant and that kind of started the journey to this lovely culinary world and, you know, working my way up from the bottom. And it's, what was the first food item that you learned to cook? So the first thing I ever made, I was probably like seven or eight, <laughs> <laughs> I took mint chocolate chip ice cream and thawed it out. And I took a pie crust that was like the pre-made frozen graham cracker ones, poured it in that, and then refroze it, and then cut it and put whipped cream on it. And nice. Served it up to my family, and that was kind of the first thing I ever made. But yeah, that was the beginning of it all. Do you have any items in particular here that you enjoy cooking more than others, whether it be a ribeye or the shrimp po' boy if you're involved in that, or pulled pork? Yeah, no, it's all fun. I mean, smoking things overnight is. Uh, it's cool because, you know, like you see when you open that smoker up and you see that nice color and the smoke and everything coming out of it, 
It smelled delicious, by the way. We had a first eye view of yeah, the smoker opening up. Yeah, that was the uh, that will be the candy pork belly. So it's a smoked pork belly right now. Um, but ribeyes are fantastic. You know, I've done a lot of competitions cooking steak, so you take a lot of pride in doing those and um, pretty much anything. Just getting back there and having fun is what it's all about. Why Union Straw? What makes this place so unique? Um, it's just the location, uh, the people. You know, everybody thinks that Boston dining like. You can't have good food outside of Boston or outside of Providence or outside of the city. Bringing that quality of city dining and fresh local ingredients to the suburbs is something that, you know, is a big, big draw because a lot of times it's mostly chain restaurants in these kind of areas and to stand out and do fresh local ingredients as much as you can is a big draw and having free range of the kitchen to do whatever you want. Like, you know, the best thing about my job is if I wake up wanting Mexican food, I'm going to do a Mexican special. Chinese food, Chinese food, or vegetarian, it, do, like, it doesn't matter. Um, you can have fun with it. So having that freedom to do you know, whatever in the kitchen and the ownership group to have that trust in me to do that is kind of what blended it all together and, and just made it pretty awesome. I'm definitely looking forward to trying the duck grilled cheese as we're talking about been talking about since we got here but also going over the menu being from the south we love our barbecue our pulled pork so it's always a pleasure getting to try other restaurants versions of pulled pork and see how they like season or put like certain sauces on it so that's definitely one thing I want to try okay Dan so being the executive chef of Union Straw you have the big task of being in charge of what's on the menu so what kind of goes into the process of designing like what's on the menu and if it changes like season to season as well? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it definitely changes season to season. I mean, sometimes month to month, day to day, depending on, you know, harvests, storms, anything that's coming across might affect what we put on the menu. Um, but as for like designing it, you just want to put some like cool things that, um, you know, things that are traditional, but you put your little spin and twist on them and make them a little different so you can't get them at every restaurant nearby. and kind of separates you a little bit, but, um, you know, get, just kind of putting the love into the food and, and that comes out. In a... Wait, what do we have like sitting in front of us right now? Yeah, so right here on this hook, we got our smoked candied pork belly. Um, we smoke it for like five hours and then we bring it down in a pineapple habanero sauce that we candy it. So we bring out more of the sugars so it's got like that sweetness. So it's like a sweet, smoky, spicy kind of bite uh, with the fattiness. And it's, it's one of our biggest sellers and as you can see, hanging it on the hook, it's pretty eye appealing. It's dripping. It, yeah, you can see like, it dripping down here right now. I know, it's beautiful. It's just holding on and slowly going. So <laughs> if you can see there, like that's a perfect candy that's just holding on. Mm -hmm. And again, a couple trial and errors. It's a cranberry bread with a house-made blue cheese mustard, a house-made apple butter, cheddar cheese, duck confit, and uh, caramelized onions. Yeah, I saw that <laughs> back there in the kitchen. You're watching that being made. It's like, yeah. I cannot wait. <laughs> Just yeah. even see, just it's just interesting, just having like a duck grilled cheese. Like you just never really like, how does that even get put together? But then now seeing it in person, like yeah. you got to have it. You got to can't wait to just take a couple bites of this. Yeah, no, and it's good because you got the fattiness from the duck and then the cranberries with the fruit and the ch sharpness of the it's cheddar. Perfect combination. It just, yeah, it balances quite nicely. Our, the 2018 Culinary Fight Club winning dish that I came up with. It's a grilled ribeye with a duck confit roasted potatoes, mushrooms, a balsamic glaze to cut the richness and the fattiness uh, to give some acidity to it. And uh, it just has my steak seasoning on it. And it's just, it's kind of a well-balanced, perfect dish to my opinion. And this scored really well. I got a 144 out of a possible 150 on it. That's very impressive. Um, so yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. I was shocked, it's still, still so surreal that that actually happened. <laughs> I have ribeye, ribeyes are by far my favorite steak cut, yeah. so like just seeing all this on the menu is like just one brings you back home just being in the south, brain is on like barbecue, steaks, everything, so it's like this just brings me back to home right now. Ryan and I were just in the kitchen and the food is so pretty you almost don't want to eat it because it literally looks like artwork, but it smells phenomenal and it looks fantastic. We cannot wait to freaking bite into this food.
All right, I'm about to bite into the duck grilled cheese. It looks so big. I don't even think it's gonna fit in my mouth, so we're gonna see how this pans out. Don't mind me being a little bit sloppy, but it's really good. It has a nice gamey taste to it, and there's some cranberry, some cheese. It almost reminds me of like a Thanksgiving, like. Not that it's turkey, obviously it's duck, but it kind of tastes like a Thanksgiving sandwich. essential tip perfection just nice and juicy and the sauce gives it a very good taste so babe we're gonna come here for a dinner date sometime or what in a heartbeat definitely a prime dinner location dinner night dinner date bring bring the family together 